first of all, big fan of both of your work. Uh, great to be able to talk with you today. Uh, I wanted to start with a question not about the movie. Uh, when did you both feel in your career that you had made it enough as an actor that you could do that for a living and pay rent? I actually feel it was pretty definitive because whether I was right about it or not, um, I um, when I did Troop Beverly Hills, um, I was 16 and I lied and said that I was 14 to get the job. And uh, <laughs> it's the only time if you ever see a picture of me with the other <laughs> troop girls, I'm taller. I'll never be taller than any in a group. <laughs> of yeah, but I was I was actually two years older. Um, and uh, I do remember though that movie very clearly was enough money that it meant that I didn't have to go home to finish my last year of high school and that I was going to be able to finish it in Los Angeles while I kept acting, which was a very significant moment for me. Um, so I went through hard times after that in terms of ups and downs of, of career and making money as actors do. Um, but it was that moment really did make me think, I think I can be um, a professional actor. And uh, yeah, so it was very defining. Yeah, I think uh, once I got that that first job, you know, and I could let go of the survival gig, you know, which was answering phones, you know, booking facials. And that was maybe about a, a long 10 months after graduating from drama school and uh, and and only having maybe like a lunch break of 45 minutes to catch a train cross town and downtown to run into an audition to try to make an impression, then get back to work to answer those phones, be able to pay that rent. But once I got that first gig, which was a play, a bus and, a bus and truck tour um, with the Negro Ensemble Company, um, there was no turning back. And, uh, you know, after that, you just kept acting. And if there was a lull, there was always an unemployment. <laughs> I appreciate you guys uh, indulging that question. Um, uh, one of the things about this film is when you guys make an action movie, it's always you guys surrounded by men. What I loved about this, it's a bunch of women kicking ass together. I'm assuming that was the draw for the script and story of what pull, pulled you guys in. Definitely, that's a part of it, but it's a lot of ingredients to go into, uh, you know, a, you know, a couple of ingredients to go into making a great milkshake. So, you know, it's the script, it's the director and his vision, it's the other castmates that you get an opportunity to play with. And then it, you know, and it's the role. Is it something different, you know, different than, any experience that you've had before, perhaps that will like challenge you and, and grow you. Um, so all, all of this had all of that going, going for it. It was such a, a cool thing to see all these women being assembled and, uh, and feeling like, cause a lot of us actually hadn't met each other. So it was also cool to, to see, to know that we were going to kind of team up with, for me, with women that whose work I have respected and, loved watching and, and that doesn't always mean that you're gonna be simpatico, you know, it means that you'll come and deliver and, and be professionals. But we ended up all from the moment we were all on set together, it was like a natural fit and, and the, the desire to have fun and the strong work ethic and everything was, was there. So it was a really cool combo. If you guys could bring a previous character you played as another character in the library with you, which character would it be and why? I guess for me, it would probably be Ingrid Cortez. It would probably be mom and spy kids um, because she was super resourceful, um, uh, championed her kids and uh, was a spy. I think anytime you can add a spy into your scenario, it's helpful. We need to do some recon. Um, she'd be there to do that. Uh, and, um, uh, yeah, like I always, I, I felt a little bit like Ingrid, Ingrid Cortez was like a, a second cousin to Madeline. Oh, well, I don't know. Let me see. I was like, who would I, let's, why not bring Stella? Because sometimes we, you know, we need to have a little fun, <laughs> a little <laughs> enjoyment, you know, a little release, you know, we're, we've, we're pent up reading all day long and, you know, do we decimal system, but we need to have a little fun, so. Let's 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 bring some music. Let's bring some ting. Let's bring, let's bring some young guys. Let's let's have a good time. <laughs> Carla, we are all fans of when you uh, team up with Mike Flanagan. Are there any plans of you guys working together in the future? There are conversations being ha happening right now that I cannot say anything more than that. But yes, hopefully we will be teaming up in the near future. Uh, yes, I need that to happen tomorrow. So <laughs> please make that happen. Uh, <laughs> 
Oh, just, sorry. Throwing, just throwing that out there. Um, and Angela, obviously all of us are huge fans of Mission Impossible franchise and are so looking forward to the next Black Panther movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you have to be guarded with what you say, but what can you tease about Mission Impossible 7 and Black Panther 2? I can't tease anything about Mission Impossible 7 that, except that, well, COVID took me out. <laughs> literally or kept me out how about that <laughs> you know um so um yeah that's all i know about that so maybe i'll be able to tease eight when, <laughs> when that comes along uh black panther you know literally getting ready to uh uh you know get on board for that and within a couple of weeks we we began that have you read a script yet i've read a script but it's changed five times it's I've changed five that. times, and I hear it's, you know, from little notes and emails, I anticipate that it has changed since then. So all that I've tried to memorize, I probably have to throw that out. Um, my last question about the actual film, by the way, thank you. Um, I loved the library set. You guys have worked on so many different projects. What is it like when you walk on a set like that that's just so cool and well done? Was that one of your favorite sets that you've been on? Absolutely. It was, it, it made your jaw drop at how gorgeous it, it was, the specificity of it. It was super helpful um, to kind of know where we lived and so uh, awe-inspiring. And even down to the fact that they drew those amazing lions, the, the lioness with her two lions at her side, um, which felt so emblematic of the three librarians. And they really thought it out. And it also felt like it needed to, to be very, it was an auspicious space you know it needed to be something that had weight and history in it and it's rare when you're on a set actually maybe the only other thing i would liken to it in terms of how uh, impactful it was for me is the house in the first haunting uh because that was on a stage but generally on stage you kind of feel like it's a set when you're in it and this one didn't feel like that nor did nor did the house in the haunting it said it definitely set a mood immediately yeah and it formed your character Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on the movie. Good luck with the rest of your interview. Thank you so much. Good to see you.